The term busy bee dates back to the 16th century, so it's no surprise it takes hard work to make honey. To educate us on these industrious pollinators is beekeeper and entomologist with the Chicago Honey Co-op, Brittany Buckles. Brittany, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And I don't know, you guys, there are actual bees here in the <laughs> studio, we have to mention, and you can hear them. There's a microphone, you can hear the bees. This is so cool, Brittany. Yes. Why are these pollinators so important? These pollinators are so important because they are linked to our global food security. And about one out of three bites of food that you eat is from a pollination experience. And the best pollinators are our bees. Wow, and right now, I mean, the bees are struggling, right? Yes, we are in a global pollinator decline. Okay, and wh why is that? There are a lot of factors at play here. Um, pesticides is one of them, urbanization and um, deforestation and taking away their resources is another. So if you can plant wild plants that are native, that will be very beneficial because sometimes towards the end of the season or at the beginning of the season, the bees can be hungry. So choose native plants that bloom early, like in April, and things that bloom late all the way through November. And these bees will have access to their grocery store throughout their entire Aww. foraging season. So I think most people are like, why would I want to put something yeah. like that in my house and attract yeah. bees? We're trying to get rid of them. But I mean, there's different kinds too. You've got the, the wasps and stuff. Can you kind of explain the difference and what we're looking for, what kind of bees we want to attract? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we have about 450 species of bees in wow. this area. And most of them are solitary, which means that if they sting, um, that's a lot of energy and the bee will die. So they don't want to sting. And for our honeybee friends, they have guard bees that stay at home and the foragers go out and and forage. So the bees that you see in your garden really don't want to sting you, and it's a lot of energy for them to do so. So if you leave them alone and watch them work, um, we can all be friends. So well, leave them alone. And then how do you tell the difference between the different kinds of, like a wasp or a bumblebee? Um, these bees are honeybees, and they're kind of like an amber color. Sometimes they're dark too, like all the way ranging from orange to black. Uh, the yellow jackets are a bit more defensive, mm. and they're more mustard yellow. Mm. Got it. Th these guys look a little angry right now. Are they upset? <laughs> like, what, what's happening? Because we can actually hear them. <laughs> these bees are not angry or upset, but I took a piece oh. of the, um, the hive with me, and this is called a frame. So oh. inside of the frame, the bees are going to put their young, the queen will lay eggs there, but they'll also make honey. So you can see honey up here. And the reason they're, they're moving around mm -hmm. is bees cannot take a day off. They're busy bees for a reason, oh. and they're trying to make up a job for themselves to do here while they're in the studio. Um, but when they go back home, they'll be able to pick up where they left off and continue their foraging. Well, can you tell us about the work that Chicago Honey Co-op does? Uh, do you have these hives throughout the city? Yes, yes, we have hives throughout the city. Um, if you're interested in keeping bees, please let us know. Hmm. We also um, offer classes in the winter and in the summer for beekeepers at all different ranges of skills and expertise. Um, so yeah, we really enjoy it. And if you're interested in learning more, please let us know. Do you guys ever relocate hives? If somebody has one in their yard and just doesn't want it there anymore, but doesn't obviously want to kill the bees, can you help with that? Sure, yeah, we would love to do bee, bee rescue. Um, we'll rescue your bumblebees or your honeybees, um, however we can help the pollinators. If you get a swarm, um, that's a colony without a hive. Mm -hmm. We'll catch the swarm and we'll give them a hive, which is what they're looking for. So if you see a swarm, let us know too. Mm. Okay, what happens to the bees in the wintertime? I want to, like, what do they do? The bees at the winter time, um, we try to get them through the winter. It's a little bit of a difficult time for them right. here in Illinois, but we give them bee cozies, which is kind of like a coat that fits over oh, their hive. So cute. Um, so we like to do that by <laughs> Thanksgiving, um, and we make sure they have medicine to fight the varroa mite, and we even give them like a sheet of burlap to collect the moisture. So it's all very um, specific for the care that we give them right before the winter. How many hives do you guys have across the city? Oh, we have hundreds of hives across the yeah. city. And then what is the thing not to do <laughs> if you do <laughs> see a bee? Yes, yes. If you see a bee, um, you don't want to blow on it because they have carbon dioxide receptors on the base of the antenna, and you don't want to swat at them because then maybe they do think that you're being defensive, um, and they don't have much of a reason to interfere with us at all. Sometimes the yellow jackets will be interested in your food, um, but the honeybees are focused on flowers, 
And if you're respectful to them, they'll be respectful to you. Well, Sarah's got a lot of property around her house. <laughs> I think that you should. We have wasps, though. We have a lot of wasps. So I think it's just a key to see yes. what the difference is and know that these are the good ones. How does she yeah. swap out the wasps <laughs> for the bees? Um, you can put, if you have an area that is high, high levels of uh, wasps, you can protect your bees by putting these special entrance mm. um, blocks on there where gotcha. the bees are kind of smart enough to figure it out, but the yellow jackets get stuck, and you just put them right on the hive, and it's a great defense. Wow. Brittany, oh. thank you so much <laughs> for being with us. We love your products, too. I think your honey's delicious that you yeah. guys make there. Yeah. You can connect with Brittany and the Chicago Honey Co-op on social media at Chicago. Chicagohoney or co-op and go to their website, can give them a call at the number there on your screen. Brittany, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. And the bees didn't escape. Yeah. We did it. <laughs>